able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Sean Barber has been pole vaulting since before he could ride a bike. We cut down an old crossbar for the pole vault pit and uh, I used that to jump across one side to the other on a little canal we had in our backyard. He's gone from springing over a canal to jumping over the height of a two-story building. But as a physicist, I have one question. How does he do it? There's so many variables. The length of the run, how much, you know, generating the right speed, making sure your step's on. Proper step determines the angle of takeoff. We have about 200 poles. <laughs> And mm -hmm. you know, each one has a different flex for it. So clearly there's a lot to think about, but let's make things a little bit simpler. Sean is competing against one of the fundamental truths of the universe, the conservation of energy. Sean can't use any more energy than all the energy he's generated, and it takes a lot of energy to get over 18 feet in the air. This kind of energy is called potential energy. But, if energy can never be created or destroyed, where does Sean get all that energy? All the energy is really coming from the run and the takeoff. They're building up as much speed as they can and to get that pole into, into what we call a three-foot box so that you can take off and swing up and up over the bar. As the vaulter runs down the runway, they generate kinetic energy or the energy of motion, but they need to redirect that motion upwards. Not only do you got to get that pole to vertical, that pole's got to bend, and the stiffer the pole, of course, the better, the, you know, the better the recoil. Just as gravity wants to pull Sean back to the ground, the bent pole wants to unbend itself. Bending the pole allows Sean to buy a little bit of extra time so that he can redirect his horizontal motion upwards in what's called the takeoff. When it comes down to the takeoff, it's a lot about angular momentum and angular velocity. Then he can let the pole release its potential energy and sling him over the crossbar. If you can wait until you feel like you're over the box and then try moving the pole, then you're a lot more in control and you know exactly where you are through the jump. To store the most potential energy in the pole, the vaulter needs to grip the longest pole they can by holding as high as possible and Sean is really good at that. He tends to be a little more fearless when it comes to holding a little higher. But why doesn't the vaulter just hold the longest pull around? Remember, the vaulter has to be able to store all of the kinetic energy they can muster during the run in the pull, and they have to be able to jump over top of the pull so that it launches them upwards, not backwards. It's creating enough speed in the pit pull. to use the pull. Depending on the strength of the pull, that pull is going to bend. It's going to absorb whatever your takeoff is, but at the same time it's going to shorten what we call the lever coming up. Bending the pole allows you to hold a little bit higher. They have to select the pole that is just stiff enough to store all of the potential energy they put into the bend. The stiffer the resistance, we want as hard a resistance as we can, but still be able to get in the pit. But they also need it to be short enough so that they can jump to vertical during takeoff. It's scary when you're holding a little higher because your goal is to go, still get in the pit, but that's what makes it exciting is because there's all these variables. Now, the bent pole acts like an uncoiling spring as it releases its energy upwards and converts it into the kinetic energy they need to get over the bar. Throughout the vault, they convert energy from one form into another with amazing precision. But there's got to be more to it, right? I can't give away all my secrets. 